Namaskar viewers. Today in health quotient uh, series, another very important topic that is uh, to do with our another vital organ called kidney. And uh, on and off we hear the kidney failure, transplantation and uh, urinary tract infection, this kind of terminologies. But uh, all of us take it in a very layman uh, terminology concept and we don't know what does this mean. We don't know why does it occur at first place and then what is the treatment course. So let us hear from the expert today. And uh, I'm very happy to say that uh, Dr. Girish is with us. He is a very senior nephrologist and uh, many awards and many recognition under this bucket. Also a uh, very generous doctor. I have heard that he is a very uh, social working and philanthropic mindset person and service oriented doctor. So thank you for your time to be with us, doctor. Thank you. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, doctor, as I said in the opening remark that uh, many of us don't even know where does the kid kidney exist. And uh, sometimes when there is a severe pain in the back, they say there is a problem with the kidney. Sometimes there is severe pain in the abdomen and they say it's a kidney problem. So first and foremost, what I want to understand is for the layman, what is the function of kidney? So... Uh... Um, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thank you so much for the introduction once again. Very kind in words. Um, so, kidney has basically four functions. Major functions is what I'm going to talk about. The first function is removing of waste products. Whatever, when we eat, when we consume drugs, whatever, when we uh, metabolize, there are lots of waste products that are generated in the body. And uh, this needs to be taken out. One of the ways that gets removed is through the urine. So one of the main functions of the kidney is to remove waste products and certain medications from the system. The second important function of the kidney is to regulate water balance, meaning to say uh, whatever fluid we consume, uh, whatever the excess we have consumed to regulate and remove the fluid in adequate amounts so that we don't develop a retained fluid is one of the other important functions. The third important function is to manage certain salt and electrolyte levels in our body like the sodium potassium calcium acid base all these electrolytes are maintained at a certain level by kidneys and the fourth and um, equally important function is to regulate blood pressure quite often heart is seen as a close ally to blood pressure equally important is kidney so it handles the amount of salt and fluid and hence regulates and controls the blood pressure. So it's a vital organ to perform all these four functions which I have mentioned. These are the major functions. Yeah. So, Doctor, this gives rise to another question. How would somebody know? See, there are some uh, symptoms which you prominently identify if there is a failure. But there are some symptoms which are silent. You do not realize that. So any specific test and after a certain age, do you recommend to the patient to know that kidney is working perfectly fine? So there is no uh, easy way to recognize kidney problem because most of the kidney problems are asymptomatic. See, grossly kidney problems can be divided into two categories. One is reversible. The other one is irreversible. The reversible kidney diseases are the ones which present with symptoms like stones, infections, and they quite often give you warning. Whereas this Irreversible kidney diseases are the ones which are very silent and it grows, goes through various stages of irreversibility, starting from uh, stage 1 to stage 5. We call it as chronic kidney disease in medical terminology. And it can, it can start off totally in an asymptomatic way at stage 1 and then progress on to stage 5. And it may be stage 5 by the time people recognize symptoms and signs which is where it is important to get certain tests that helps uh, determine the kidney function early. Uh, simple tests are blood pressure check, yes. certain blood tests like your creatinine and the EGFR, which is the uh, estimation of uh, glomerular filtration rate. Uh, it's again derived from the creatinine. So that needs to be cautiously interpreted by a specialist such as nephrologist. And then the urine tests uh, to look for any protein, any blood in the urine, uh, that is not visible to the uh, uh, common eye. So these tests uh, help us identify kidney diseases fairly early. 
what should be the creatinine level for a normal function um more than understanding what should be the normal creatinine level uh, one should understand that creatinine is a derivative of uh, uh, it's a waste product that's derived from the muscles mm -hmm. so it varies for example in males and females the range may vary in okay. females it can be anywhere between 0.6 to 0.9 Whereas okay. in males, it may be anywhere between one to one point two, okay. or sometimes one point three as well, depending upon your muscle mass. So it is uh, sometimes not so accurate to just look at the creatinine. Okay. Uh, we have to look at the kidney function as a overall package of blood pressure, kidney uh, tests. Uh, that's the creatinine and urine and ultrasound. Sometimes, see these things uh, put together will give you the overall package for kidney health. Okay, got it. I have a question, doctor. Uh, somebody is asking that uh, is a over intake of protein cause the um, more uh, calcium deposition? Um, no, I mean over intake of protein doesn't uh, cause calcium deposition. Uh, it's basically uh, one needs to understand. There is always a concern when it comes to diet and kidney disease. Does too much protein harm the kidney? Okay. Um, I think uh, too much of abnormal protein taken in uh, very inadvertent amounts, definitely it's not good for any organ. Let it be kidney. It can be detrimental for your heart and your gut as well. So uh, on an average, a healthy person needs about one gram per kg per day of protein. If that's met, the combination of both vegetarian and non-vegetarian in case somebody is non-vegetarian, it has to be a balanced diet. Um, that per se will not to, uh, increase the calcium uh, content in the kidney. Content deposition, okay. No. Um, uh, doctor, um, entire life, we are under some or the other drug intake for whatever reason. Uh, will that cause some sort of a kidney function damage? Yeah, that's an excellent question. Uh, there is There are a lot of, uh, you know, um, uh, anxiety among the people that if you take many drugs, it mm. damages the kidney. Mm. I don't think that's right at all because uh, good drugs prescribed by the doctors mm. to protect your other organ health always helps the kidney. For example, diabetic, certain diabetic drugs, mm. uh, antihypertensive drugs, mm. these, even if you take it for the rest of your life, it actually prevents damages to organs like kidney and heart. So this will not harm the kidney. Whereas certain types of painkillers like okay. NSAIDs, diclofenac, given without monitoring the tests, given without a proper indication, over-the-counter uh, medications, these are all the stuff which can put pressure on the kidney and eventually damage it if it is not monitored in the long term. Uh, there are um, water therapies wherein you consume 2 to 3 liters uh, in a day is what prescribed. Or in the morning, you should consume so much of amount of water. So that's where his question is. Will it cause okay. any kind of... Uh, no, I don't think if you consume... But if you consume excess, like 4 to 5 liters of water in a day, it can reduce your sodium. If it is pure water, without okay. milk, uh, you, it can uh, artificially, in a way, reduce the sodium. Right. And hyponatremia is what we call it, as reduction right. of sodium. And that right. may predispose to confusion, seizures, right. when, right. depending right. upon the salt right. uh, depletion level. So, a general 1, one to 2 liters, one and a half to 2 liters right. fluid is not an issue. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, doctor, my question. Uh, it is like, you know, uh, I have done some study and uh, in every seven people, one person is diabetic and, and in every 10 people, one person is hypertension or BP patient. So most of them are on either identified and on medication or they're ignorant. So um, what I want to ask is um, how much it is dangerous for the kidney function? Okay. I think you are you have very generous numbers. I still feel that in real life, it's much more frequent. The way we see, yeah, it is almost as bad as 1 in 3 to 1 in 4 in India. A lot of them don't get tested and, they're, and we are focusing a lot on urban population. So, we don't know what's happening in the True. suburbs and the rural areas where still uh, the access to healthcare is not so great. True. And quite often, you know, the and also the way of testing sugars is also different because people just go empty stomach completely 12 hours fast yeah. and try to still do the same old way of fasting sugars and they get they get falsely reassured that they are not diabetic. Yes. So that's a little bit of a challenge. Yeah. So one needs to understand that diabetes can affect uh, the kidney or the heart in any uh, time of the day, 24 hours 7. So it's important to see what's your 24 or uh, 24 bar 7 
sort of uh, diabetic level for two days or sorry two weeks or so that's called continuous glucose monitoring that will give you a little bit more uh, actual Promising. numbers of diabetes and even hypertension quite often we get seen that if uh, blood pressure is high they'll say oh it's fault of an error i mean error of an instrument oh, no 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 it's just because of my tension and all this i think those denial factors should be taken out machine if there is doubtful in the machine check it on three members of your family and you will identify the reality because machines don't lie usually if you are programmed to do certain things it, it will either tell you the truth for all three or lie so that's why i think we have to be a little bit more careful the reason i am coming to which is the answer to your question is the commonest cause for irreversible kidney disease is diabetes and hypertension they are the biggest killers for us 90% of my patients who walk into the clinic with kidney problems with that are irreversible or called chronic kidney disease are either diabetic or hypertensive or both as i keep telling the first bit as soon as they get diagnosed with diabetes you know the control is very important your day to day control of sugars is very very vital same with the blood pressure and uh, it's equally important to understand that once you are a diabetic for 5 to 10 years and then your sugar level drops all of a sudden it's important to understand why your sugar level has dropped if it has not dropped for 10 years and that's quite often the beginning of the kidney problem oh insulin okay. gets excreted to the through the kidneys i see and then quite often people will say i have been diabetic for 10 years on insulin now i am not a diabetic okay. yeah i'm very fine with the new medicines i'm like really did you check your kidney function mm. and that's when i think the kidney problem start a lot of people gets falsely reassured that my diabetic control but one should question why after 10 years my uh, sugar control has got better and that's the time when you are when the kidney function goes down this uh, the hypertension adds into picture so the salt and water retention happens and they slowly go into a hypertensive uh, phase and both combined damages the kidney okay so now uh, doctor now that you are giving a very good awareness so is it uh, wise to tell people that uh, uh, you should check your sugar not as a fasting and pp but as a hba uh, factor and also yeah. as you rightly said that pp part especially don't believe in your so called digital uh, <laughs> machines so much get tested it from the lab or any expert for that matter yeah. so i think yeah the hb even see record uh, is what is important at the same time there are more advanced uh, way of checking sugars which is called the continuous glucose monitoring where ah. they put a patch okay. and then check your sugar levels for two weeks because then it will tell you what foods will spike your sugar levels and that spikes over a long period of time will push you into the pre diabetic and diabetic state Stage. and yeah and that's where i think we have to be very um wise in you know getting these tests done early and identifying these spikes and the foods for example some people if they eat ragi mm. the, the, you can see a spike mm. in the sugar levels so you know that that is the food that's going to cause so then you cut down on those carbohydrates and then focus a little bit better uh, diet and try to control those spikes so that's how you can you know prevent monitor it properly yeah monitoring and prevent uh, further damage to the yeah. end organs yeah that's right so another uh, very uh, buzz word called uh, kidney stone mm. <laughs> and uh, i first want to understand what is the cause of it it could be one of the one which we are discussing as of now definitely and uh, second i want to ask is it curable so i think uh, kidney stones are uh, uh, sort of a, um, uh, even though they can be painful or a, you know better disease to have in the kidneys because uh, they are definitely treatable and uh, you know you can get rid of them and to some extent even cure them why it happens i mean the factors are very uh, many factors can predispose to dehydration family tendencies some hereditary conditions high uric acid levels and high red meat intake and all this st- stuff can predispose to uh, uric i mean k- kidney stones now the uh, the th- good thing about kidney stones is it gives symptoms although it's Yes. you know painful and it can cause fevers urinary infections it gives you some sort of a warning mm-hmm. to push you to the doctor and usually it's uh, the urologist who or the kidney surgeon who diagnoses it and treats it and quite often it it can be fixed and depending upon the size position mm-hmm. and the damage it is doing it can be treated accordingly mm-hmm. and once you get rid of the kidney stone uh, it should generally uh, be not a problem but there are certain 
patients who can have recurrent kidney stones okay. and they have some metabolic abnormalities which need to be again worked up and diagnosed like for example high calcium oxalate uh, levels and these sort of things are very common or re- recurrent infections because of there is mm-hmm. if there is any structural abnormality with the urinary tract all this can predispose to uh, stones so these factors can be looked and fixed and usually the kidney function gets retained very well okay. now uh, one very basic question uh, please don't mm-hmm. laugh at me but uh, every kidney stone doesn't need a surgery am i right that's true every kidney stone doesn't need a surgery absolutely it depends again on the size the position some kidney stones with ex- extra fluid intake it just passes away certain kidney stones may be present as a speck uh, in the part of kidney which doesn't actually uh, you know cause much problems or it doesn't it's not blocking the urinary passage and then it's just there without any symptoms quite often it can be ignored so i don't think all kidney stones needs to be subjected to surgery subjected to surgery okay uh after one very general uh, education question i want to um let's say a uh, sir somebody is 40 plus and uh, you know having a very um, hectic lifestyle he knows the uh, see in india especially people undergo mm-hmm. a lot of stress a lot of anxiety a lot of uh, uh, discomfort as well so it's bound to happen some of the other discomfort and some other the health challenge so what a word of caution would you have for them saying that uh, kidney per se may not be under the uh, so called uh, danger but other parameters which can lead to kidney failure they should be careful about so i want you to please give them little bit of caution of that sure so the generally stress is not good for uh, as you said various aspects other than the kidney but eventually when uh, i keep telling my patients who walk in through to the door with abnormal kidney functions or even normal kidney function saying that 90 to 95% of the problems i see as an nephrologist are not directly because of kidneys yeah. the causative factor is somewhere else yes. like for example diabetes hypertension heart disease yeah. lung disease yeah. other things uh, strokes Uh, for example these sort of uh, things so stress definitely doesn't help diabetes and hypertension it basically brings your uh, you know causes a lot of hormonal variation and can be detrimental to your organ systems and when other organ systems gets affected obviously kidney gets eventually under pressure and it's quite often uh, you know last organ to get involved put yes. it this way and which is where i think one has to uh, manage stress or the mental health very well because in this current um, era it's all a sort of a you're all in the fast lane sure. it was not like the previous we all need to do more and we have to get the best out to you know survive to get our meet our ends etc etc so we should also have a mechanism where we can deal with the stress yeah. Yeah. so at the end of the day uh, you know health is uh, wealth yeah. because we it should not be in such a way that in your first uh half of your life you uh, to earn wealth you spend your health mm. and then a second half you s- spend your wealth to probably or pro- maybe we not earn back your health so which is that should not be the case yeah last question for today doctor um, like uh, smoking and alcohol consumption mm-hmm. <laughs> this is a root cause of almost every disease so <clears throat> i'm sure it must be more Uh, dear to kidney disease so yeah. <laughs> please once again certainly and, uh, certainly smoking and alcohol is not good for health uh, it's it's definitely injurious to certain organs uh, but the way it affects kidneys is again funny it's not direct smoking i'll take smoking first it doesn't directly damage the kidney it narrows the blood vessels ah. to all the organs okay. and to your heart to your brain yes. and to your kidney as well okay. and also it damages the lungs yes. so when these two damages are done then your heart uh, begins to play up and then one suffers from heart attack strokes yes. and people have uh, high blood pressures yes. and as a result of which kidneys get affected okay and that's how it is not good okay. uh, and alcohol per se doesn't damage the kidney contrary to the popular belief okay. it in fact uh, damages the liver excess and uh, you know excess okay. and inappropriate consumption of alcohol can cause liver damage liver. once liver is damaged it again puts pressure on the kidney liver. so both smoking and alcohol are a no no um 
I think that's where we'll end for today. And we'll continue in the next session with another set of questions. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you. It's been a real pleasure sure. interacting with you. Okay. Thank you.